Welcome to a short introduction on how to create an Azure web app in the Azure portal. My name is Chris Peachman. I'm a Microsoft MVP. You can follow me on my blog at buildazure.com or on Twitter at buildazure. Now let's go into the Azure portal and see how this is done. Now I'm logged into the Azure portal. To start off creating a web app, we'll click on plus new in the left hand navigation. This will bring up the Azure Marketplace where we can select what resources we want to create. In this case, we'll select the Web plus Mobile section, and then we'll click on Web App because we want to provision a web app. Then we need to enter a name for our web app. We'll name this one Amazing Web App, and we can see it is unique. This does need to be unique across all of Azure because the name of the web app is used as a subdomain of the main Azure Websites.net root domain name. This is the default domain name that will be assigned to our web app. We'll be able to access it. Then my Azure subscription is already selected in the drop-down of subscriptions. And then we need to set the resource group that we want to put this web app into. A resource group is kind of a logical container that can house uh, many resources in your subscription to help organize things and manage and secure them. So you can select an existing resource group or create a new one. In this case, I'm going to create a new one. And I'm going to paste in the name of our web app and then add the word group at the end. And then we click on App Service Plan and Location. We can specify the App Service Plan. I'll select click Create New to create a new App Service Plan. The App Service Plan is going to allow us to specify the pricing tier and the resources available to our app. We need to name the App Service Plan first. So I'm just going to name it the same name as the app and just put Plan at the end. Then select the location. This is the Azure region where we want to host our app. We can select from any of the available Azure regions around the world that are accessible within our subscription to host things. In this case, I'll select Japan West. Then we'll click on Pricing Tier. And we can change from the default standard S1 pricing tier, which we can see gives us one CPU core and 1.75 gigabytes of memory, 50 gig of storage, SSL custom domain support, and a few other features. We can also see the estimated cost of the S1 pricing tier right here. And if we scroll up and down in this list, we can see the premium pricing tiers and the estimated monthly cost and features of them. The standard tiers, we can go down and see the basic tiers. So a little bit cheaper options. And then all the way down at the bottom, we have the free and shared tiers, the cheapest options available. The free and shared tiers do operate on shared CPU and memory. So it's similar to any shared hosting environment. And they get one gigabyte of storage available. Shared offers the addition of having custom domain support. Whereas the free tier, you don't get custom domains. You only get the default domain that's created for the app within Azure. And then the basic tiers, additional features, standard and premium as well. For the production application, you would normally use the standard tier or premium tier. In this case, we'll just choose free. I'll click select. And then I'll click OK to select our app service plan options. And then we have the option we can turn on optionally if we want to use application insights for this web app. In this case, I'll just leave it turned off. I can click pin the dashboard to pin this web app to my dashboard when it's provisioned. I'll click create. And it's going to go and validate that all the naming uniqueness requirements are met and everything else. And then it's going to go ahead and start provisioning that web app on my subscription. And now we can see our portal and we have the tile pinned. We can see it's currently processing with the little loader's loading spinner that is actually provisioning our web app yet. Once it's done provisioning, that loading spinner will be replaced with the app name and we'll be able to click on that to access our web app. In the meantime, while it's provisioning that, I'm going to click on resource groups and we'll go navigate to the resource group for our web app. And we can see our amazing web app group. And we can see the resources in there. We have an app service resource. This is the web app where we'll deploy an application to. Amazing web app. And then our app service plan, named Amazing Web App Plan. This is specifying the pricing tier. You can actually host multiple apps within the same web app plan, offering the ability to share those resources that you have a dedicated VM behind the scenes, and you can share multiple, multiple apps of your own within that same dedicated virtual machine. I'll click on the app service resource and we can see some basic information about our web app. We can see the URL to be able to access that web app here in the essentials pane. This is that default domain that's automatically provisioned or given to our web app at the time of creation. We can see the host names for FTP and FTPS endpoints that can be used to be able to FTP code up into our web app for deployment. And then there's also on the left hand pane we have a bunch of navigations to access all the various different features for the web app. If we select scale up, scale up will go and allow us to change the pricing tier on the fly 
without any downtime of our application. This is nice if you need to scale up or down um, to match changes in load. So I'll close that. And then on this Essentials pane, I'm going to click on the name of my web app. And this is going to open up the web app running in Azure into a new tab in the browser. In this case, I don't have an app deployed there yet, so it's opening up the main uh, default placeholder page that's created on all web apps when they're provisioned. If we deployed a web app out to it, we would see our web app running. So now we have a web app created. It's being hosted in Japan West. We're using the free pricing tier at the moment. And now we can go ahead and deploy an application, configure other settings, and do things with our web app and start hosting an application in Azure using Platform as a Service. Thanks for watching, and if you want to see more videos like this, please subscribe.